Hey, what's up everybody, Usama here. In this video, we're going to learn how to set up a collective booking calendar in Go High Level. So the use case is we wanna create a calendar for a consulting company for interviews. They will be sending this calendar link to the shortlisted candidates and they will be able to pick a slot. And at the back end, what's happening is before showing the availability in slots, the calendar will be checking between schedules of two to three people that we will have inside our calendar that will be on that meeting to conduct the interview. So let's have a look at the structure of the company first and what will be happening in the back end and then we'll dive into the setup. So here I have a visual representation of what should be happening inside the calendar. So we'll have three people conducting the interview. There will be one primary owner in this collective booking calendar, which should be the CEO. And his availability would be Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then we have two senior members in the company, Tanya and Sam, who have availability from Monday through Friday on different timings. So what this collective booking calendar will be doing is finding common slots between all these three people and, and making sure that all three are available on the slots that will be shown inside the calendar. So if you have a situation like this where you want to check between the schedules of different people and making sure they have a common slot, then collective booking calendar would be really good. It's not only helpful for interviews, it can also be used for client onboardings, internal meetings, or even conducting multi-doctor medical consultations. So now that we have an idea of what we need to do, let's dive into our Go High Level sub account and I'll show you the step-by-step -step process on how to accomplish this. All right, so I'm in my Go High Level sub account and the first thing you need to make sure is you head over to settings and then under my staff, you need to make sure that all the people that need to be inside the calendar are added in as staff members. If they're not, you can click on add employee and then fill out this information to send them an invite to your sub account. As you can see that I already have a few people in here. So the next step is to make sure that their availability is set and you can check that by heading over to this edit icon, then clicking on user availability on the left. And here, just make sure that their hours are set so you can set available hours right here. And also you can define the meeting location. If it is Zoom, you can connect it. Or if you want to put a custom link to it, you can also add that here. As of now, I already have the user availability set up for all these three people as per their names and the availability I've mentioned right here. Once you're done with these two steps, the next step is to go to calendars and you can head down here. And then we're going to create a new calendar. So you'll click on this button right here and then you'll see an option for collective booking. So this is the one we will choose. So we'll just give it a name and then we can also add a description here, which is always encouraged. You can put it here. You can also do rich text formatting if you need to. And then at this step, we're going to add some team members. So at least two are required for the collective booking configuration. So we're going to select this one, this person and Tanya. So we have all these three people as per this diagram for a clear understanding. Then we just need to give it a custom URL and then for the meeting duration, our interviews will be 30 minutes max. So we can decide that. And then we have the general booking availability. What I like to do is just check a common slot between all three people. So the earliest anybody is starting here is 8 a.m. So I would say 8 a.m. would be the general availability start time. And then the max somebody is going is at five. So I think eight to five is good for general availability. Any team member in this company is not working outside these hours that we have mentioned here. So it's good to go. And then you can also choose to accept payments. Of course, it doesn't make sense in this case. So it would depend on the use case. But once these settings are done, you can either hit confirm to quickly create the calendar, but we're going to click on advanced settings and have a look at a few other things that are really important. All right, so the first thing on the meeting details is the calendar logo. This is where your company logo would go. I always encourage adding one. So let's just add it really quick. Then we have the calendar name and description. We already filled that out, so it's already pre-filled. Then you can add it to a group if you need to for better organization. And then we have the meeting invite title. I usually like to put in a clear title because right now it just says the contact name. This is what will show up on the calendar invite that will be sent to the person scheduling this appointment. So I've just put in interview for ABC Consulting and then we have an option to select our team members again. This is where you can make customizations. Now by default, the first person you added here will become the appointment owner for this collective booking calendar. You can also change it. If you need to delete a user, you need to make sure they're not the owner. If you still need to do that, you can make somebody else an owner and then delete the other person if you need to from the configuration. For now, I'm just gonna keep the same owner. One really important thing here is that the meeting location that will be for the owner will be the default meeting location for this appointment. So I'm just gonna input a link here and then we're going to head down under meeting location you can see the default one is this person you can also change it if you need to but for now i'm just going to keep the same configuration because this appointment owner will be leading the appointment and it will be on their zoom link then the next step is availability where you can make changes if you need to we already have that decided so we're just going to scroll down and see at a few other settings you can also enable look busy this will actually intentionally hide the number of slots to make yourself busy but in this case we already have a limited availability so i'm just going to turn this one off and then here you can define the meeting intervals or durations 
or put in things like minimum scheduling notice or date range. I'm going to keep it wide open for now. Then you also have maximum bookings per day. So if you only want to conduct maybe two to three interviews at max, you can put a number here. And once that number is reached on that specific day, that day or the slots of that day will become unavailable. And then we have pre-buffer and post-buffer time. So if there are consecutive interviews and you need a breather between that, you can put in like five minutes or something that works for you. Then the next step is forms and payments. Here you can customize the form if you need to. By default, the basic information gets asked. If you want to collect more information, you can create a custom form and then you can map it here. Then if we scroll down, the payment thing is irrelevant in this case. So we're just going to skip to the next step, which is notifications and additional options. So here we're choosing to notify different people. So I would notify the contact, the assigned user. And if you need to notify some additional emails, you can do so here as well. And then I'm also going to allow the Google and Outlook invitation. So that way they can add it to their calendars. And then we have the assigned contacts to the respective calendar team members option. So as you know, that Osama was the appointment owner. So if you enable this option, it will actually make sure that Osama is also the assigned user contact for that person. And once you enable it, it also unlocks another option that skip assigning contact if the contact already has an assigned user. So if you enable it, what it will do is it will skip it if the contact already has an assigned user in the past. Now, once this is done, we have the cancellation and reschedule policy next. So I will disable it for this case, but you can choose to allow it. And if you do, you can actually disable rescheduling or cancellations a few minutes, hours or days before the meeting. So that's completely up to you. And then under additional notes, we have phone and email. So you can also put more information. This will go on the calendar invite that will be sent to the people. Then the last step we have is customization. So you can choose between the two widget styles. We have classic and then we have Neo, which is a bit more margin, where you can also customize the primary colors or change the button text or hide the calendar title. So you can customize it a little bit based on your liking. Once this is all good to go, all we have to do is now click on save and we're pretty much good to go. And now if you need to use this calendar, you can click on the three dots, click on share here, copy the scheduling or permanent link if you're sending it in SMS or email. It should look something like this. So all the days in the slots we are seeing right now are the common available slots between all three people that we have in the calendar now. And we can double check it. So you can see we have Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays available. And because this is a blank calendar, we do not have any other appointments in it right now. So we'll see the same slots on all the days. So if I look at any of these, the first time we have available is 10 a.m. and it goes up to 1.30 p.m. And if we want to verify this is all working correctly, we can go back to our diagram here. So if you have a look, the only common days between these three people are Monday, Wednesday and Friday, because these two people are working Monday to Friday based on the availability we have set up under the staff settings. And this person is available Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So only these three days are common. And if you talk about the slots or the time, then we have 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. common between all three people. So even though these people are working till four, but the common slot is still 10 to two. And that is why we see 10 to two availability right here. So if you book the last appointment 130, that will go up to two. And that is the same exact schedule that we have right here in our diagram. So this just verifies that it is working spot on. And this is exactly how you can set up a collective booking calendar for your company as well.